Good day. In this video we're having a look at one of my lathes drilling and tapping and at the end we'll have a look at my homemade floating tap holder. This is the job we're doing. This aluminium is 2011 machining alloy. I try not to use anything else. The lathe's in low range, so it can only do 1250, 1350. And I wanted it in low range so that I had plenty of torque for the tapping. When you're tapping, oh, let's look at that drill first. That's a dormer jobber drill. And it's starting without a center or spotting drill, which is quite remarkable. It goes against all our training. Um, I mean, I normally use stub drills, so I expect them to start on centre without it being a problem but when I found this jobber drill did it as well just started on centre I thought oh, I'm not going to argue save me putting another spot a spotting drill in place yeah those spare holes are for a hercus that turned up in my shed with different holes so I no longer have that one but that's how the chuck ended up with uh, an extra set of holes. Yeah, and the drill did start nicely. It's really good. When you're using a floating tap holder, you set the feed of the tap to less than the actual pitch of the tap, and then the tap gets drawn out and runs at its own pitch into the work and then the spring loaded tap holder falls back. That's the motor that drives the lathe, it's got two speed ranges and uh, uses an encoder driven by a tiny timing belt, you can see it there which actually runs on the, on, off the spindle and it, so that's so that the Lay the software always knows what speed the lathe is doing no matter what range you have it in and if you uh, hang on we'll have a look at my floating tap holder here you can see the bits I've used ER16 collet holder cross hole drilled through the shank that slides in a brass tube in a block brass tube has a slot in it pin goes through as you can see and sits in the slot and provides the drive for the tap holder. Brass tube is held in place with some grub screws. Though I must admit I didn't put dimples in for the grub screws and the tube started to turn so I've since had to put dimples in to get the grub screws to hold it in place. There's a view of the tail end In this you can see the brass tubes being worn away but I do do a number of tapped holes so it's not surprising I guess. That's the other end of the tube sitting in the block. I use an o-ring on the shank of the ER16 just to take up a bit of the shock both when the tap is going in and when it bounces back. There's a shot tapping M6 you can see the thing working just slides forward as it goes in. You make the feed a little bit under what it should be so that the tap is free to just follow its own threads into the hole. Little bit of turning. see the tap holder moving forward and bouncing back again. Do it a bit more slowly. There you go. Thank you for watching.